What's taking mom and dad so long? They're probably buying all the maps. With the GPS out, they need all the help they can get. We're lucky there's even a gas station here in the middle of nowhere. Tell me about it, and it feels like we've been in nowhere all day. <sighs> this trip is taking forever. I'm so bored. We should have flown. <laughs> you don't fly to a camping trip in the wilderness. Whatever. How much longer do we still have to drive? I think we're about halfway. Ugh, really? I'm so sick of traveling. <laughs> you wouldn't have made much of a pioneer. Speaking of which, let's use the app and go see some. I'm not in the mood, but here, knock yourself out. Pioneer. Hey, there's no service to- Haha, ha, remember, middle of nowhere. Ooh, got a bar! Leo, where are we? Let's go ask those guys. Excuse me, sirs. Are you pioneers? Why, we're the most pioneering pioneers who may have ever pioneered. At least for Americans. Great! I'm Leo, and this is my sister, Layla. I'm Captain Meriwether Lewis. And I'm Second Lieutenant William Clark, but you could just call me Captain Clark. Sorry, but what exactly is a pioneer? A pioneer is a person who is among the first to explore or settle a new area. So, what makes you the pioneeriest pioneers? Well, for the last 22 months, we've ventured into and through lands no Americans have ever explored before. We've seen, hunted, and eaten plants and animals no other American knows exist. And along the journey, we've encountered nearly 50 different Indian tribes and been the first Americans to greet them. We're on a long trip too and had some extra time, which was getting kind of boring. So we wanted to meet some historic pioneers. Oh, we know all about overcoming long periods of boredom. But your journey sounds like it's been really exciting. You've gotten bored? Sure. We can't travel during winter. The weather is too harsh. So both times we felt winter approaching, we found a good spot to build a fort and then waited around four to five months. Months? My sister starts complaining about being bored after an hour. Don't get me wrong. Boredom can be a great motivator. It teaches patience and creativity. Even during winter, there's plenty of hunting or fishing to do. And Captain Lewis and I have record-keeping and journaling responsibilities, too. But last winter during long snowstorms, and this winter during long rainstorms, there's been plenty of time to be bored. We just had to come up with creative ways to pass the time. So why are you guys doing this? Did you just need a really long vacation? It's a bit of a long story. Do you have the- They have tons of time, Captain Clark. That's why they're here. Oh, yeah. So it all starts a few years ago in 1803. When my good friend and our president, Thomas Jefferson, bought the territory of Louisiana. An area of 828,000 square miles. For $15 million. That's a bunch of money. It actually was a steal. But France really needed the cash. So after some negotiating, we purchased all the land known as Louisiana from Napoleon. While planning the purchase, President Jefferson recruited me to lead what became known as the Corps of Discovery Expedition. Despite claiming ownership of the land, much of the territory of Louisiana had not yet been explored by the French, and President Jefferson had clear objectives for our journey. He wanted the land surveyed and maps made. He wanted the area's plants and animals studied. He wanted us to meet and establish friendly relations with Indian tribes. And most importantly, he wanted us to search for a possible water route that could be navigated all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Captain Lewis was selected to lead the journey, not just because of his friendship with President Jefferson, but also thanks to his skill as a hunter and outdoorsman, and his outstanding military record. Why, thank you, Captain Clark. I chose you to co-lead the operation for the same reasons. And then, children, for a year we went about recruiting skillful and brave men getting boats built, and gathering supplies for the journey. How long did it take you to pack for our trip? Uh, 30 minutes. You? Uh, maybe five. Leo. Hmm, I don't think I packed underwear. Rookie mistake. On May 21st, 1804, with a crew of over 40 men, our three boats left the town of St. Charles and began sailing. But mostly rowing against the current. Up the mighty Missouri River. 50 miles later, we were in uncharted territories, having traveled further west than any European or American settlement, and the adventure of a lifetime began. 
For the next five months, we traveled almost 2,000 miles up the river before we had to stop for winter, completing the first half of our journey. Did you come across any Indian tribes? Tons! Were they friendly to you? Many were and helped us gather information about their cultures and gave us advice for hunting. But some were frustrated that we wouldn't trade weapons to them. President Jefferson had ordered us not to and gave us gold medallions and ribbons to give us gifts instead. Why did the tribes want weapons? Most tribes were not peaceful towards one another, and there were often fights and even wars between them. Our expedition is outfitted with the finest modern firearms, and many tribes wish they could get their hands on them. One tribe, the mighty Lakota, refused to let us pass through their section of the Missouri River and drew their guns on us. So we drew ours in return and were ready to fight. But luckily, their chief accepted some gifts and everything simmered down. How did you communicate with the Indians? A whole lot of body language sometimes. And I recruited a few men who had been trappers and had experience speaking with the Indians. And then we met Sacagawea. As winter neared, we met a friendly Indian tribe called the Mandans. We knew snow would soon be coming, so we built a fort across the river from where the Mandans lived, and we holed up there for the next five months. During our stay, we got to know a French fur trader and his Indian wife who were staying with the Mandans. The wife, who was pregnant, wasn't Mandan, but rather from a tribe we were expecting to meet later in our journey called the Shoshone. Her name was Sacagawea, and after helping her deliver her baby, Captain Lewis hired her as a guide and interpreter. She and her family are still with us. Cool! Where is she? She's out now with the baby. Ah, <sighs> such a hard worker. And she's probably just a few years older than you, Layla. Really? And she's a mom? Indian culture is different from tribe to tribe. But all of the many that we have observed are very different from our American culture. One of the biggest differences that we have noticed is how women and girls are viewed and treated. Our American females live very different lives. I bet. When spring finally arrived, we continued on our journey. And that's when we began seeing the most amazing things. Like what? Herds of thousands of buffalo roaming the plains, terrifying grizzly bears, waterfalls, and the majestic and enormous Rocky Mountains. Eventually, we ran out of river, but fortunately, we made it to Shoshone lands and Sacagawea helped us negotiate with her people for horses to get us across the mountains. We traveled on for nearly another four months and finally reached the Pacific Ocean in time to get this fort built to wait out another winter. So no water route all the way to the ocean, huh? We haven't found one yet, but we're getting prepared to start our return journey. And we're going to look a little further north on the way back, just in case. We want other Americans to have as much information as possible about these Western lands in case they want to travel here too. You guys sure have had an amazing trip. Super long, but amazing. I'm not gonna lie. Between the bears, the Indians, and just the great unknown, there have been times that I've been afraid. But you're right. It's been amazing to explore this beautiful new part of our country. Hey, we're only halfway done. Keep your spirits high, Captain Clark. We've still got so much more pioneering to pioneer. Wow, we're halfway on our trip. I've been complaining and have sort of had a bad attitude. And we're traveling in comfort and just for hours, not years. And no grizzly bear attacks either. I guess we've really got it easy in the future. American pioneers like you didn't even have roads or maps, but you did have patience and endurance. Unlike me. Ugh, sorry. Don't get down on yourself. Everyone on our journey has definitely had moments, but the American spirit that drives us surely still lives on in your time too. Thanks. I'll try to remember to have a little more appreciation for the explorers who took risks so that eventually people like me and Leo could enjoy our camping trips. Thanks for telling us about this incredible journey, Captain Lewis and Captain Clark. You're welcome. Happy and safe travels, you two. Same to you. Bye. If you like time traveling with Leo and Layla, watch more of their adventures at PragerUKids.com. And parents, don't forget to subscribe.